Hi, everybody. Welcome for joining this webinar today about succeeding or failing with cloud computing. And the purpose of this webinar is really to explain to you how to sell or position cloud education. So that's what we'll be focusing on today. Uh, my name is CJ Bast. I'm the product manager for ITpreneurs' cloud products. Um, so at the end, I'll share my information in case you have any questions so that you know how to reach me. So we'll, we'll take about half an hour. At the end, we'll, uh, we'll leave some time for questions and answers. So we'll get started so we can actually make it within the 30 minutes. And again, thanks for joining. And I pull up this graphic here that will probably make you giggle, but um, it's kind of what I sometimes see when we talk to clients. And some people react like the guy in this picture, and they say, yeah, I've heard too much about it. I don't understand what it is. Um, I have no time for this right now. It's too difficult to change. So that's kind of typical, and we kind of have to break through that. And if you look at some of the statistics, and I'll and throughout the presentation, I pull up a couple more. But Gartner says that within two years, 80% of Fortune 100, uh, sorry, 1,000 enterprises will use the cloud. So if you're pitching cloud training to your clients, then obviously you need to explain to them that, that they will use cloud, whether, whether they like it or not. I mean, cloud is coming. And it's just a matter of time for your clients to use it and for your people, for the people within the organizations to use it. And um, two days ago, there uh, uh, was a post by Gartner, because there's now IT Expo in Orlando, and this was posted two days ago, about the top 10 strategies, um, let's say technology trends for 2013. And if you look at the list, like one and two mobile applications, still somewhat impacted by the cloud, but number three and five, uh, even six, they're all related to cloud computing. So mobile apps, um, yeah, obviously big, big, um, obviously a, a big trend and uh, perhaps a big yeah, issue for some organizations. But yeah, cloud is really in that in that top ten of uh, of trends. So I mean, cloud is definitely coming. That's just uh, that's just a fact right now. And the difficulty with with cloud and say is that it's a dis disruptive phenomenon. So it can really make or break an organization. If you look, for example, at Sears, that's um, you're probably familiar with the with the store Sears in the United States. Um, they created a subsidiary called uh, MetaScale, and it's a data management and storage company. And now, since they've been so successful in doing it for Sears, now they're going to say, well, if if Sears does this so well, why shouldn't Sears, you know, help other clients with, let's say, data management and storage as well? Because yeah, they're doing it so well now. Same at Amazon. I mean, yeah, if you look at the transition they've made from the bookstore to what they are now, it's incredible. Um, bring your own device will is another trend that will kind of like disrupt um, the organization somewhat if they don't manage it well. So cloud really will, um, yeah, define almost whether you will win or not if you handle it well. And I'll I'll cover a, co a couple of topics here to explain what I mean by that. So for example, and I think the world is changing. And, um, and I think I'll explain a couple examples how that is affecting our industry, basically the IT industry. And um, if you look at Blockbuster, and they went bust actually in 2012, uh, pun intended, that's, um, yeah, it's almost a sad story. I mean, Black Blockbuster, video store, um, we all used to rent videos and go to the store. But then Netflix came around and they offered um, basically that you could get movies in the mail. Uh, Netflix was also very good in adopting the online model, so you can actually basically just rent movies online. And if we look at some of the statistics, you can clearly see that the world is changing. So Blockbuster yeah, is out of business. You could already see it in 2009 here that, that things were changing. And this is just some Google trend information that I pulled up. But I mean, we, we still watch movies, and we have the same experience, but in a different delivery mode. So for example, you don't go to the store anymore if you see the guy here on the left. Um, but now you go basically online, and the people that were managing the store now managing data centers, which is good for us because I think everybody here on the call is in working in the IT industry. And some other examples that I'm sure you're familiar with is that, uh, I mean, Amazon uh, bookstores, we still read books, but in a different way. So now we have e readers, uh, people read on an iPad. So again, the um, the delivery of the medium has changed. 
and obviously you get the point music has changed as well the way we actually not listen to music but the way we actually access it um, again from the store to an iPod iPhone um, you now have these subscription models that you get unlimited listening to music for a specific you know for amount of money um, so there's a different way to serve the purpose and that leads me to yeah, the world is changing um, our world the world of IT and if you think back at the five and a quarter inch floppy disk well after that came the, the three and a half uh, three and a half inch disk which I like much more and um, then came the CD which lasted maybe even too long if you ask me but then came the flash drive and now we're we're at the cloud uh, era let's say and um, yeah that the fact that we are here in yeah, all the if you look at let's say the past technology you can imagine that the cloud will impact an organization and that's just me saying it right and I pulled up some some more information in saying that IDG they basically IDC reports they did a um, they interviewed CIOs and 67 percent of them said that the IT function has had to rapidly expand its skill set uh, and knowledge in order to keep up with cloud computing developments and the question here you could ask your clients is well have you trans you know transformed your organization what are you doing to really yeah, adopt cloud comp computing and what I mean by that is really that cloud impacts everybody within an organization so whether it's the salespeople supply chain as you can see here on the screen now uh, the marketing folks but also HR and finance because now they have different financial models they don't have upfront costs but more let's say gradual costs recurring every month um, so that's really yeah, a big change for for a lot of organizations and if you look at some of the roles and um, here on the slide I mean they just plotted some roles which are impacted by cloud and it might almost seem that it's all roles so software testers you can see on the screen uh, the service manager the auditor so everybody will see an impact of cloud computing and it's not just the IT folks but it's also the business people and um, I'll plot some more here for you and if you look at HR marketing again sales finance procurement um, they will all see an impact of cloud computing and a lot of people ask me so yeah great CJ but now what um, so I know things are changing how do I get ready and obviously there is a solution for it and the solution really lies in the fact that yeah, organizations need to get their people ready and we kind of invented a new term um, when we say you know people readiness um, but it's really about ensuring that the people are ready for cloud computing and again if we then say well but what does that mean well that means that you have to develop uh, the right competencies and I we picked the, the Swiss Army knife here because you know, when I go camping I usually take one with me and it always seems to come in handy because where whether I need the scissors a knife a bottle opener um, there's always something that I need and an organization needs to be sure that they are ready as well for what is coming so that, that they have the correct competencies um, to support what they are doing that also means though that you need to develop the competencies at the right level so whether you have a junior architect with on your staff or a senior architect or perhaps even a lead architect depending on the size of the organization as well they all have different needs for uh, education and competencies and and they have to be addressed well also to that point I mean you have to address the competency needs but you also have to address them at the right time I mean if you're doing a certain project where you don't need the lead architect yet then there might not be a point in educating and training that person so here I just plot again some some projects and yeah this by no means is the is the holy grail of uh, which projects to do first just so you get an idea if you do these projects and execute them then make sure that you train again the audience at the right time so perhaps the core team of architects needs training first um, security specialists and developers are next uh, HR people might follow afterwards um, and again the message here is that, that an organization and that could perhaps be your client that they need to have the answers as to when will I train a specific subset of my staff um, and do I have a plan for 
um, adopting cloud computing and ensuring the competencies are in place. And to yeah, basically drive that message home, I, I picked a couple of roles and I, I won't ask you to read all these roles here, I just plotted a couple. So don't read them, but just bear with me. So IT specialist, there's a lot of roles you know, below that in that column, like database uh, administrator, infrastructure specialist. We have also another column called technical services. So for example, cl client infrastructure specialist, a computer operator, and I can kind of go on like project management folks, and the vendor managers, the architects, the account managers, and also the consultants. So these are roles typically that you will find within an IT organization. And then if you look at what, what kind of impact cloud could have on this specific set of people, and you'll see here on the orange side, I just colored the roles that are yeah, impacted by cloud computing. And this is a scenario on the top here. You can see that's a, that it's the creation of the on-premise uh, on premise private cloud. So if you're building one, then it has impact on all these people. And uh, so yeah, when you're saying, yeah, okay, the organization is going to adopt private cloud computing, then um, yeah, does the organization really know what that means for the people uh, that they have on staff? So that's just one scenario, and if I then go to a second, and here is imagine you know putting the business critical applications into the, let's say the enterprise cloud, then here you can see the the roles in red, and again this is more of a, a slide to discuss with an organization, say well do you know which roles will be impacted on your side? But obviously if you're you know, putting a lot of your software into enterprise cloud computing, then you don't need so many of your uh, IT people on staff because you know, a lot of the people are no longer necessary. Um, some new roles will, will will be created or will be needed as well. For example, cloud broker and the one in green that's a new role. So again, it's just a talking point, but you got to make sure that your client can actually explain: Is this relevant for me? Yeah, these roles will change or these roles will not, and yeah, what solution do they have in place if these roles change for them? And then there's another scenario, but which I'll kind of like skip because of time. Because what the message that I want to give you is really that many job roles within an organization need cloud competencies and need cloud training ultimately. So again, IT roles here on the left and business roles there on the right. And uh, I won't go through them all, but again, they, they will all see an impact of cloud computing. The one role perhaps uh, will see a bigger impact than the other but uh, they, they all see a need for uh, cloud competencies. And, and therefore, and I'm kind of like jumping ahead here, but um, in getting started, what almost everybody within an organization needs is the CompTIA Cloud Essentials uh, course and exam. And that's kind of the roadmap that we picture. So for example, all these programs that you'll see are accredited either by the Cloud Credential Council or CompTIA or both. Um, so we advise to start with Cloud Essentials because it's a wonderful program um, supported by, let's see, de developed with support from HP, IBM, EMC, uh, ING. So they all provide inputs in the curriculum uh, of the exam, which is managed by CompTIA. And it's a great introduction into cloud computing. Second, there's also a Virtualization Essentials course, which somebody could take after they've taken Cloud Essentials. Um, then perhaps they want to specialize on a specific vendor, whether it be Microsoft or VMware. Um, and if they then are getting more comfortable, perhaps they can do an advanced course. Um, so because obviously a lot of people want to get advanced certifications. And um, yeah, this is just a typical roadmap of where somebody could start. And again, the, perhaps the secretary or you know the business manager would stop after Cloud Essentials and somebody else would continue on this road. But remember that, yeah, Cloud Essentials is really a great starting point. There is also a more complicated diagram that I had included, but won't cover on this webinar. And we're working on some advanced level courses as well, such as the professional cloud solutions architect, uh, security developers, um, et cetera. But um, that will, we'll get into too much detail for this webinar. But if you're interested, uh, then please send me an email, which I'll provide at the end of uh, my slides.
So again, I'm kind of um, repeating myself here, but start with Cloud Essentials. It's, it's a great program to teach terminology, um, provide an understanding of cloud computing, and aid in, let's say, decision making. And I just plotted some roles there on the bottom for people who, yeah, who I believe are, would really benefit from, from cloud computing, uh, the CompTIA Cloud Essentials course. And if you if you'd like to know, get some more information on a specific certification, uh, I would say Google is your friend. So just Google CompTIA Cloud Essentials, and then you'll find a you know plethora of information. Uh, if you add you know CompTIA Cloud Essentials ITpreneurs in Google, then obviously you will find our products. Um, but have a look because there's a lot of organizations currently offering this program to help organizations build cloud competencies. About the exam. And I think that's um, yeah, it's good to know if you, when you're talking to clients, if they ask, oh, so is there a certification? Yes, uh, obviously, CompTIA uh, provides the CompTIA Cloud Essentials exam, and that is an entry-level exam. It's one hour uh, in length. It's uh, either proctored with the ITpreneurs course delivery, so then people actually take the exam right at the end of the training course, or people can get a voucher and visit a Pearson View Center. Um, and the, and the exam consists of 50 questions. And um, so, yeah, there's, I think there's a, a large group of people that would uh, that would benefit from CompTIA Cloud Essentials. And I created a, a slide for that. And personally, I took the exam myself. Uh, I passed, and I'm yeah, I'm quite happy that I um, yeah, that I took the course that I can that I now have the vocabulary to talk about cloud computing. It's been a while that I uh, go that I took it, but it really helped me back then. Um, and I think it really helps professionals to have yeah, to get confidence about working with cloud computing, as you can see uh, on the first bullet here, uh, to really master concepts, terminology, and the third bullet here, understand implications of cloud on their specific role and also on the organization, and really knowing and understanding how can I support the organization with cloud. So it, it's really the start of a training journey, as you could see on some of my previous slides. Um, because after the Cloud Essentials exam or course, um, they can follow up, follow up with other training, whether it be the Virtualization Essentials course or perhaps uh, immediately a, a specific a vendor specialization. Because I, I really think the Cloud Essentials course is a great um, course before somebody takes specific vendor training. So I really think it's a powerful certificate for professionals. But also, if again, if you're speaking to organizations and you have to basically sell or pitch cloud essentials to them then how does it help them well, and, and some of the points here on the slide are similar to the professional in a different way so for example I really think it, it builds the in-house cloud competencies so people will get educated um, the, you know fear uncertainty and doubt is removed from the organization so they'll be quicker in adopting cloud computing um, and therefore second bullet here increased cloud adoption they make better decisions. Perhaps you know they make better decisions, and therefore uh, they don't make the wrong decisions, or at least less. Um, so they will save money as well. They will get more of the cloud investments because yeah, things will just get started quicker because people can actually get excited about cloud computing now instead of saying, "Yeah, I don't know, I heard too much about it, I don't have time, etc." And then the last one, high a higher cloud project success rate. So that's just in a nutshell what I think. CompTIA Cloud Essentials and education in general on cloud uh, does for an organization. And obviously, I have to put some information about ITpreneurs in there because I think we have a great offering for the CompTIA Cloud Essentials exam as well as other certificates because all the programs are multilingual. I mean, the, current, the, the materials are currently available in uh, Portuguese, also in uh, Japanese, and obviously in English. I know we have some people here from. Um, Mexico and, and other countries in Latin America. We don't have Spanish yet, but we'll probably be working on that shortly. We also have multiple levels. So again, you can start with CompTIA Cloud Essentials, but you can also take other training, uh, more advanced training if you want to. There's multiple uh, geographies that we operate in, so we can basically deliver uh, classroom courses anywhere, um, but also provide e-learnings. And we have multiple channels. So again, classroom versions, e-learning, a virtual classroom, everything is possible by, uh, by using or becoming an entrepreneur's partner. And then 
you might be thinking, oh, great, but has anybody done it yet um, from, let's say, the, the larger clients? Uh, obviously, yes. And I quickly want to touch on how ING has done it. And I hope you're still with me because uh, I do re recognize that the pace is quite high, but hope you're enjoying this. Um, quickly about ING, and I think uh, you probably know ING in the United States from ING Direct, which I believe is now part of Capital One, but uh, the organization is quite large. Um, so ING Banking operates in 40 countries, 85 million customers, and on the bottom here, they really want to be the preferred bank for the customers and really using IT to become that preferred supplier, let's say. So what did they want to do with cloud? Well, they wanted to build a private cloud for ING, so they can actually leverage some of the cloud benefits. They also were working on virtual desktop infrastructure implementations, so that people could work from home, that, um, that the support would be easier. And they also wanted to consolidate data centers from 16 to four to two data centers when the project will be finalized. And how do they do that? Well, they said, well, let's use education to support all these initiatives. So what they said is, let's ensure that uh, all our people are ready for cloud computing. And so here on the left, you see some of the roles that they identified. And on the right, you see some of the programs that were utilized and how they were utilized. For example, the Cloud Essentials course was, was offered first. After that, the Computer Cloud Essentials exam. Um, the business simulation was followed. Uh, some people actually took both the virtualization and the cloud exam. Um, so these are just a couple of, yeah, kind of what you can use in saying, well, an organization can utilize this. And another slide about ING, how they actually rolled out the project. And you probably think, wow, that's a, that's a lot of different boxes here on the slide, and you're correct. But the thing to, the message here to, uh, to take away today is that they kind of saw the entire training initiative as a change management process. So on the left here, you see the video message of the CTO. Um, so they, yeah, they really said, hey, cloud is important for us. We want to support it. We want to ensure that you are ready. So they provided the message from the CIO and CTO. After that, some people set, were selected to take awareness training. Another subset of people took the virtualization essentials class as well as the cloud essentials class. So this kind of gives an idea of how they ran uh, the project in time and uh, how many of the people were involved in training. So as you can see, more people took the awareness training because there's a wider appeal, but then uh, quite a significant number of people took the cloud essentials class. And to close the ING story, we pulled up a quote from the, the CTO, Tony Kerrison at ING. And what I find so powerful of his quote is that he explains that yeah, developing internal cloud competencies is really important to the success of ING and, uh, and to the success with cloud computing. And he says at the end, uh, to say without that understanding, the workforce would never be able to exploit the marketplace, or you could say the cloud, uh, in the right way. And um, yeah, that message really hit home, I think, at some other organization that said, yeah, we really should um, yeah, invest in our people and ensure that they are ready for what cloud computing can bring. Oh, oh, only a couple more slides left, and I think we only have a couple more um, minutes, so I, I think I'm good on time. Perhaps we even have some time for questions and answers and finish within the 30 minutes. Um, so some more success stories, so just to give you an idea who's currently using the program. And um, this slide obviously contains way too much text to present, but VMware, for example, Computer Associates, uh, ABN Emro, they're always using the CompTIA Cloud Essentials uh, course and exams to develop the competencies for either the people internally or for their clients. And we have some more um, logos as well from other organizations that are utilizing this program, such as Xerox, um, Global Knowledge, Avnet, Dell, uh, Telmex, that's the largest telecom operator in Mexico, uh, General Dynamics, Foster Miller, a very large partner in uh, South Africa, uh, Capgemini. So these are just some vendors and system integrators that are also utilizing this program. And again, Google is your friend. So if you Google, um, for example, Global Knowledge, and Computer Cloud Essentials, 
and you obviously find uh, the day after the program, where, etc. And then the last part of my presentation is explaining, um, well, great presentation, but now what? Well, obviously, ITpreneurs Partners uh, can leverage the ITpreneurs Partner portal. And what we provide on there is obviously this presentation. So you could download this presentation on the Partner portal, but also other information such as data sheets, fact sheets, uh, case studies, testimonials. Uh, we provide white papers, uh, also some cheat sheets for your salespeople. So if you say, hey, I'd like to actually receive a cheat sheet, you can send me an email. But that information is all available to IT Nurse Partners. So again, here's some data sheets, fact sheets, um, the things that I just mentioned. So that is in a nutshell what I yeah, wanted to um, bring across today. And if we do a quick recap, I mean, it's really, um, I'm sure you remember the guy um, who stuck his head in the sand, the first picture on my slides. Um, a lot of people say, yeah, I heard too much about it, don't understand what it is, but then just show them the facts. The reports from Gardner, IDC, that cloud is coming, and it's just a matter of time for organizations um, to feel the impact. And also remember that the um, yeah, cloud is impacted an organization significantly, whether it's uh, finance, marketing, HR, or IT, all roles are impacted. So they need to develop the right competencies at the right time um, with the right solutions. And then obviously Comptia Cloud Essentials is a great start um, to actually do so. So with that, I finished within the 30 minutes. I still have some time for questions and answers, which I believe that you can put in the question box. I have a couple, so I will try to answer them as best as I can. So here we go. And if you have more questions, please just put them in the question box. I have a question here that says, is the exam in Spanish? And uh, no, currently the exam is not available in Spanish yet. Um, if you would be interested in, um, let's say, a Spanish exam, send me an email because the more, let's say, interest we have in the exam in Spanish, the quicker we can actually develop it and, uh, and provide it to you. Hope that answered your question. Then I have a second one here that says, what other products could you recommend in, um, in adopting cloud computing? Well, actually, if you look at, and there's yeah, a couple of good resources. If you look at CloudU uh, from Rackspace, that provides some, I think, complementary information uh, for the CompTIA Cloud Essentials exam. Um, I think the, uh, it just, yeah, it, it might be a little bit different, but I think after you've done CompTIA Cloud Essentials, that yeah, might be good practice. Um, also, the, there's obviously the vendor-specific certifications from uh, Microsoft and VMware that you could take after Comptia Cloud Essentials. And there's uh, yeah, free webinars and white papers that obviously you can read. But again, I really think that yeah, before you yeah, start with anything, I think Comptia Cloud Essentials is a great program um, yeah, to deliver the foundations that you would need. I think I have one more here. Let's see, I'm scrolling down. How do I sign up as a trainer to deliver this? Well, that answer is quite simple. Uh, send me an email, <laughs> and uh, I'll provide you all the information that we have as we provide some trainer-trainer sessions uh, throughout the year, so that should be quite easy. So look forward to receiving that email. Um, and with that, I think we've come to the end of our webinar. If you do have questions, um, then don't hesitate to send me an email. I will send the recording of this webinar to you as soon as I can. And uh, yeah, I hope, hope that you enjoy this webinar. Hope you find it useful in uh, trying to explain clients, your clients and organizations, why cloud education is so important and why uh, Computer Cloud Essentials is such a great fit. So again, um, write down my email if you want this presentation deck in case you don't have access to the IT Printers portal. And uh, yeah, look forward to hearing from you and uh, seeing you at, at the next webinar. Thank you very much and have a great day or great evening depending on your location. Take care and bye.